Hi, so as promised, this is uh, part three of the Adaptive Gear Change Saga. So if you saw part two earlier, you'd have seen all the components that you've uh, that make this little mechanism up uh, laid out on the bench uh, with a bit of an explanation, sort of pre-assembly. So I've put it all together. This is a dry fit, so um, it's pretty much as it would be in the car, except there's a spring missing here. I've not put that in because it makes life a little more difficult. Uh, in the last hour or so I've been building these brackets, uh, so two brackets, one in the front and one behind. This is the front incidentally. As you can see that they basically bolt directly to the front and rear um, bearing bushes. And I've left enough room here so you can get a socket round there and undo the nut if you need to. Okay. Um, a bit later on today I'll be boxing the sides off between here and across the back so it'll act like a, essentially a steel cage and the way that it's going to fit in the car is it will be uh, two bolts in the front, two bolts in the rear so you can unbolt the four bolts and take the entire piece up and out of the car as a complete unit which I think will be an advantage uh, when it comes to assembly and disassembly in the future. So just as a reminder of um, what it is we're looking at then, so um, you can see the forwards and backwards motion so if you was in the middle position, which it uh, roughly is actually, um, in fact that is, so you would have third gear, fourth gear, okay first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. So you can see that you've got the front and back motion. The lower half of the stick is providing the push-pull required on the cables. And if you twist the gear stick left or right, it's activating that bell crank, which I uh, spoke to you about earlier on. You can see how that rose joint is uh, working there. Okay, so as you pull over to the left, it's pulling the other cable or pushing the other cable to engage the different um, levels of gear, so first, second, third, fourth, etc. Okay, so let's just give you a very quick tour and we'll see what's going on there. Okay, you can see this stainless steel cage, the bit I pointed out earlier on. So that's running on the bearings front and rear, but enables the entire cage to rock essentially. And then within that cage, you have the forward and back movement again sat on two bearings. So this entire left, right, forwards and backwards mechanism is sat on four stainless steel bearings. So again, little chance that it's going to uh, wear out, I think you'll agree. Um, okay, so let's just give it a quick twizzle. You can see what's going on. I shall twizzle it as I move. Okay. So an awful lot of work, but I guess um, you'll, you'll probably agree. You get out what you put in, right? So... Uh, just as a to serve as a bit of a reminder, that is the original version. So I'm fairly sure you'll agree. I've managed to save a little bit of space there. You can see the original one's massive. In fact, my one fits inside it. Okay, but it's doing exactly the same job. Um, so there you go. So the next video I do maybe this um, actually in situ operating the cables um, so you can see what's going on but uh, until then thanks very much for watching